Hello America and the world. Welcome to Life After Lockup. This is a program that is strategically designed to show the community and the world a different side of lockup. This is an opportunity to show you that once we've been arrested and have gone to court and have done our time, there is a life after we get out. And we are here to show that everybody is not bad. There are some people that get out that do make it. That are, there are some success stories. And this is what this program is all about. And we interview men and women just so you, the public, can have an opportunity to choose a different th path of thought concerning inmates and their after lockup. We are welcoming today Pastor Michael Pryor. God bless you, sir. Bless you. Thank Th you. Thank you for being a part of this program. Thank you for being here. And we just want to uh, just share some things with the with the with the public. And I want to want you first to kind of uh, let us know a little bit about yourself, what um, where you've come from, as far as what you went to um, jail or prison for. How long were you there, and how long you been out? Okay. Uh, first of all, I would I would like to thank you for allowing me to be on the episode. Um, right. um, think what you're doing is great. Uh, and people do need to see a different outlook on uh, persons who have been incarcerated and let out. Uh, first of all, my name is Michael Pryor. Um, right. I'm 34 years old. Young man. Uh, yeah. Uh, my home is um, Fulton, Kentucky. Okay. Um, been in Paducah approximately 12 years. Um, have a beautiful wife, uh, Laquella Pryor, and two beautiful children, uh, Lance Pryor and Tasia Forrest. Um, uh, God has really blessed me. Um, came to Paducah in search of a barbering degree. Um, okay. uh, graduated uh, uh, with distinction at the barbering department. Great. All A's and, Great. and God Smart just has, man too. has blessed me. Um, um, and, and from there, uh, I actually um, opened up my own business. Great. Uh, Great. Own barbershop, Great. first class cuts in Fulton, Kentucky. Oh, man. That's Stayed beautiful. there um, um, doing barbering um, and just making the people of God look good. That's good. Yeah. That's what it's all yeah. about, looking exactly. good. Yeah. But, but before all of that, before mm -hmm. God start blessing you, opening up opportunities, uh, because everybody knows that this show is about uh, people that have been incarcerated, how, what happened in that area before you were able to get yourself established this Got way? You. Got you. Well, I grew up in a, in a great home. Uh, parents were wonderful, um, supported me very well, mm -hmm. took care of me very well. But um, as you know, uh, we always don't obey our parents. Right, right, um, right. And actually uh, made some bad choices um, all through high school. Mm -hmm. um, instead of wanting to be a professional athlete, I wanted to be a professional drug dealer. Oh, okay. So um, um, I started um, selling drugs uh, probably at the age of 15. And um, um, the drug dealing career soared. Oh, okay. uh, it was good, but in a bad way. Right, uh, right. Because I surely don't want to give the impression that selling drugs is good. Right, right, um, right. But um, straight out of high school, like many kids would actually go to college. Right. Um, myself, I went straight to the penitentiary. Mm. Uh, mm. Straight, straight to the penitentiary. Uh, no college. Um, um, at the age of 19, went to the penitentiary. Uh, spent six months mm, okay. uh, boot camp. Mm. Um, boot camp was a program where they actually um, gave you a chance to mm -hmm. better yourself right. and to get out in maybe like 90 days. Okay. During that 90 day period, um, I actually dislocated my arm, okay. so that sent me back to prison. Okay. Uh, so from there, um, um, I spent six months okay. incarcerated in prison. Okay. Um, got out, made parole. I went back to doing the same thing. All right. All right. Uh, <clears throat> spent about thirty days out. Mm. Okay. Got caught again. Okay. Selling drugs. Mm. Uh, went back this time, spent three years, Ooh, three spent years. three years incarcerated, okay. um, got out. Uh, that's when I felt as if it was time to get it right because okay. I felt I um, had a lot of people in my corner that really loved me and um, I felt people beginning to say, ah, he'll, he'll do the same right, thing, right, he's going right. to get out and do the same thing. So right. um, I actually decided to make a change in my life, man. Okay. Um, I really wanted to do something positive, okay. really wanted to do something positive and I think you and I talked before, mm -hmm. um, once you're let out, it's very difficult. Very difficult, uh, yes. Because yes. all you're looking for is a chance yeah. to do right. Right. Um, application after application, application after application, 
rejected, denied mm. because of mm -hmm. um, one part of the felony. I mean, you fill out all the information about your background, uh, where you're from, your residence, mm -hmm. and then you come to this one question. Have you ever been convicted of a felony? Have you ever <laughs> been convicted of a felony? And right there, I mean, the, 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 all hope seems yeah. to just leave out of right. it. Right. Because you're already judging, you know, that um, I know it's over. They're going right. to look at this and mm. ball it up, throw it away. Throw it away. Um, so you have two choices at that time. You had to either tell a lie mm -hmm. or tell the truth. Mm -hmm. Tell you what I did. Uh, in an incident like that, I'm glad you said that. In an incident, um, I remember uh, filling out an application. Mm -hmm. uh, great job, great job. Making about $18 an hour. <laughs> yes, okay. yes, yes, yes. Uh, um, went through the, uh, all the phases to actually get the job, uh, did well, uh, get a phone call. Mm. Uh, people give me my hire date. Oh, I've, I've made it now. Made I've, it. I've made it, man. Oh, man. Um, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, I'm out of the ghetto. All right. Yeah, so. Uh, <laughs> we did a big time. But uh, there again, there was a question. Have you ever been convicted of a felony? Oh, and take note, this was after I had got out of prison. Right, right. Um, so after filling out all these applications and marking yes and telling the truth, right. uh, now I come to this point to where uh, I can't mess this up. Right, right. So, uh, so I'm going to try something different. Okay. So I marked, no, uh, no I've never been convicted of a felony. Okay. Uh, number one, it was a lie. Right, uh, right. Number two, I felt that that's what I needed to do right. uh, to get these people to accept me. Right, exactly. Just give me a chance. Right. Just give me a chance. Right. So I marked, uh, no, I've never been convicted of a felon. Take note, I had a hire date. They called mm. me for a hire date. Mm -hmm. uh, two days later, before the hire date, um, Human Resources called me. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Pryor, uh, you failed to tell us something. Right. I'm like, what is it? Uh, he said, well, you, have you ever been incarcerated? And right then, I surely, yeah. I surely wanted to lie again, <laughs> but I couldn't. <laughs> but I said, yes, uh, uh, and you know, we find all types of excuses to justify right. why we didn't right. Uh, right. Um, mark yes on the application. Mm -hmm. um, from there, you know, I tried my best. I begged the man, but he was like, you know, I'm sorry, uh, but mm -hmm. we just can't, can't mm -hmm. use you. Mm -hmm. Can't use you. And that really hurt. I know it did. And, and from that moment on, um, God spoke to me. And, I've been marking uh, yes, 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 yes. But watch this, I've still been rejected, right, rejected, rejected. rejected. rejected right. uh, but then, you know, God stepped in again. And where God has taken me, um, a job would actually um, be stop. A yeah, be, be a, a hindrance. hindrance. Right now. Yes. Uh, right. Uh -huh. To what he wants to do in my life. Right. Uh, because he needs me out here to touch people right. or just like myself. Right, exactly. So, so that's, that's what happened. And, and mm -hmm. I thought that was amazing it was an, uh, that, that experience. Is, that within itself is, is amazing because it, it almost push, pushes a person into not being honest mm -hmm. about mm -hmm. their past. But yeah. then it, it eventually it comes out. Yeah, it comes out. It, it comes eventually out. comes out. It let comes let out. me ask a question, kind of going back just a little bit, because I made the statement a lot, um, and I guess firsthand you will be able to let, set me straight or let me know whether I'm telling the truth or not or being fair or not. I've always said that selling drugs sometimes is as addictive as using drugs. Would you kind of ag agree with that to a certain, a certain degree? I will say you're absolutely right, 100% right. Because a drug dealer has the same desires as a drug user. Okay. Because watch this, they both want the same product. Okay. And they both uh, do anything to get the same product. Okay. Um, I remember being in the streets <clears throat> um, selling drugs. Mm -hmm. um, people would just about do anything just to get a hit. To get it right. right. Just to get a hit of right. what this product I had. Mm -hmm. um, but I also looked on the flip side. Mm -hmm. There was a season um, where when drugs were not available to be got maybe right. um and we called that in the streets a drought okay, okay. there was a drought there was a drought so it? therefore the drug dealer couldn't get the drugs that he needed to supply the drug users right so uh we are just as addictive mm -hmm. as the drug yeah. user because we'll do anything to get the, drug, get the drug when there's a drought we'll call texas mm -hmm. we'll call miami and we'll travel to get the drugs uh, right. 
and take these penitentiary chances of mm -hmm. getting life to get the drugs. Same thing the drug user does. We do the same thing. Same thing. Now, from your from the standpoint of a user, is it the money for the most part? Oh yes, oh yes, yes. It's the money. It's the money, it's and the especially money. especially, you know, being being coming from um, coming from a lifestyle where you weren't able to get all that you wanted. Right. Uh, so you just about do anything to get what you want. What you want. And being a drug dealer, you know. Uh, uh, I always felt that God was going to make me famous some kind of way. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, so the enemy will trick you. Oh, yes. He'll trick you. Yeah. And uh, this is what he did. Um, um, he tricked me into the fame and the glory of being a drug dealer. Mm -hmm. um, um, and it was great. It was great. People all over the world know you. Kids mm -hmm. know you. Mm -hmm. uh, that's Mike. He's the man. Right, He's the man. Right. Uh, uh, but after so many chances, man, you just get tired. Mm -hmm. You just get tired. Um, and then God woke me up. Wow. Well, and, and you know, it, it is, it is, it is um, amazing because both incidents, either the dealer or the, the addict, actually the only way to get out of that is got to be deliverance from God. Mm. It's got to be deliverance mm. because even though I wasn't um, a dealer, I was addicted to the money. Mm -hmm. And uh, in order for a person to get out of, out of prison, and settle, I would say settle for less. Mm. It has to take, it has to, when I say to settle for less, to be willing to settle for less. Mm. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Be willing to, 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 to work just um, to, to be able to make an honest living. Mm -hmm. It takes God to alter a person's mindset. Yes. Yes. Because when you get used to making so much money, mm -hmm. living so much uh, in such a way, uh, it is difficult to alter that. Even though you're looking at a chance of being incarcerated, you still want that lifestyle. Mm -hmm. It takes God to, to, to alter that. What, what, um, what, what would you say the, um, that, uh, besides God, I guess that, that, that helped you uh, to, to make that journey of, 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 of change? I know God had to have a, 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 a big part of that. And I guess the reason I'm asking, um, did, did a person also come in to give you a hand, just a, a, a human being, somebody that cared? Did, did, did you have that in, in your life, somebody that oh, came by? Oh, yes, I had several people, several, several people. Uh, and then again, you know, I just wasn't listening to that. I just wanted to get back on top of the mountaintop after being incarcerated. I right. wanted to get back. Uh, to having money, having nice cars. Um, um, but after a while, when, when, when God is calling you out of something, mm -hmm. um, he won't let it prosper. Right. And so therefore, you know, <clears throat> I was at a level before I went to the penitentiary, at a level of, of, of a mountaintop experience mm -hmm. uh, of selling drugs. Um, and when you get out, um, you start from the bottom. Right. And you try right. to make your way back, back up, up to the to top. The top. Right. And that top, I never saw again. Mm. And no matter how, try, how hard I tried to actually reach the top level again, everything just failed. Mm. Everything just completely failed. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll never forget one night after being out um, gambling, drinking, getting high. Uh, uh, it was my girlfriend, which is my wife mm -hmm. now, praise God. Uh, I took a car, went out all night mm. gambling, getting high. Uh, just stayed out all night. She needed a car to go to work the next morning. Mm -hmm. So I'm not answering the phone. Mm -hmm. uh, her mother gets on the phone and says, uh, do you have my daughter's car? And uh, you was talking about this person. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Did you have a person in your life? Uh, mm -hmm. I'll never forget, I picked her up and uh, she um, told me some things about the Lord. Mm. She said, why don't you come and go to church with me Sunday morning? Mm. I don't know about that. <laughs> I don't know about going to church. <laughs> I don't know now. about that one. But I needed something. Right. And when you're at that point of life, you're willing to try right, anything. Right, right, right. So went to church with her. Oh, man, never forget it. Uh, went to church. Oh, man, I'm like asking God, you know, if this is his church, you know, let, let it be my type of church, right, you know. Right. The pastor was so real. Uh, it was a hip-hop environment, uh, what I needed. <laughs> so uh, uh, I, I, I saw a different perspective about church as right. well. Um, and as I would sit in church, something would mess with me. I don't mm -hmm. want my chills, you know. Mm -hmm. well, I mean, like, why am I sitting here about to cry? Right, right. Why, this pe preacher has been peeking in my window. How does he, yeah, somebody's no. been telling, how do you know my right. lifestyle? Right, 
right? So I would sit there, man, and, and I would feel this feeling of just, uh, just joy. And I would begin to almost cry, but I'm too cool to right, cry in course, front of people. Right. So I can't cry. No, this is, this is Mike, Mike. <laughs> I can't cry. Uh, money Mike is what right, they used to right, call me. So right. I used to jump up and run to the bathroom mm -hmm. before the tears right. fell. Right, just so you compose uh, yourself. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And uh, uh, after I got over that spat, uh, next Sunday I would go again. Uh, mm -hmm. Same feeling would hit me. Here come tears. So um, I would try to find somebody's baby to play with uh, or, just, or, or scribble right. something. What I'm going to eat after church right. or something. Just to get this spirit exactly. off of me because I didn't want anybody to see me cry. Exactly. Um, Kept going, kept going, kept going. The same feeling hits me, you know. I'm not mm -hmm. telling anybody about it. I'm too cool to tell people about right. this one. So one day, man, I um, got tired of fighting it, man, and it hit me so hard. Mm. And I found myself walking up to the altar, man, mm -hmm. giving my life to Christ, mm -hmm. man. Mm -hmm. And from mm -hmm. that moment on, man, God has elevated my life to Ain't levels of something. life that, that you could <laughs> never imagine. man, a drug dealer would love to trade places Ain't with me something. right now. Ain't that something? Man. You see, and this is this is 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 amazing because uh, God changed me in prison, mm -hmm. and I think it would have been very difficult for me had I gotten out mm -hmm. for Him to change me because I was so addicted to that lifestyle. Mm -hmm. But I I think it's it's fascinating how God can can deal with you, not let nothing that you do prosper. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. no matter what, you've tried it all before, you're doing it the same way that you've been doing it, but it, it's not working. Mm -hmm. And you know that it's something missing, and God puts a person in your life. You know, and, 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 and answer me this, too. This is just, I'm, I'm just throwing these things out there because it, it happens to a lot of us, and it helps other people. Sometimes, now, our own families really can't help us like somebody else can. Mm -mm. Would, would you think that that would yeah, be true? That, that would be true. That, uh, that would be true. Why, why do you think that is? I, I, this is just my perspective. Now, you give me yours because I think sometimes families get so irritated at us. Yeah, yeah. They get irritated at us. They get just want to kind of fold their hands up. They, they feel like that they've said everything that they can mm -hmm. say and you have just turned away from them so they can't really say anything else. I tell you, I tell you what, um, that, that wasn't my case. Uh, my family, I had a loving family, man, mm -hmm. and, and, and they're great people. Um, they believed in me, man. Oh, e great. Even, even, man, when I wasn't doing what mm -hmm. I was supposed to do. Mm -hmm. uh, they gave me chance after chance. They remind me just, just as God. Right. Chance after chance, no matter how many times I messed up, mm -hmm. they just kept loving me. There. Uh, but I just do believe that God places a certain person in your life and, and uh, that will give you a word for your life. Mm -hmm. um, and, 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 my mother-in-law did that, and, and, and I, I owe her. And, man, and when great. God blesses me tremendously, gonna I'm going to bless her. I hear you. That's great, man. But, uh, but I had great. a great family, a great that's family. Good. Great that's family, good. yeah. That's good. And, and that's, I, I guess, one of the reasons, you know, I, I even said that because when we come in contact with people, and I said we, we that have gone through the system, uh, we come in contact with people, and if we're honest with people, let them know where, we, where we've come from, they have a role to play mm -hmm. in this. They have a role to play in this transition because there is a, it is a transition. Oh, yes. Once you come out of prison, sure. it's a transition. Sure. And everybody that you meet that you are honest with, they play a part of that transition. They can either reject you mm -hmm. or encourage mm -hmm. you. Exactly. Like the people that, that came in your life, they encourage you. Yeah. They didn't reject you. Exactly. You, you know, and a lot of times people don't understand we get enough rejection. Yeah. You know, a lot of times in prison we are treated like dogs people mm -hmm. don't the yeah. society don't really yeah. realize that yeah. you know we're we're treated like dogs and sometimes even through the whole system mm -hmm. sometimes they and people don't like to hear this yeah. but yeah. the policemen sometimes they're not always honest about mm -hmm. everything you can get they can say whatever and it helps us to get caught right. it helps us to get convicted mm -hmm. and we go to prison and sometimes we are bitter mm -hmm. even mm -hmm. though we were guilty now i was guilty guilty mm -hmm. as all may seem i was guilty but it was a whole lot of things that went on that helped get me convicted. So I had a lot of bitterness in me mm -hmm. and wanted to get some people back. But mm -hmm. thank God he changed mm -hmm. me. And, and sometimes after getting out, and I, and I know you face it because you just said it, all the rejection. That is it's hard to take rejection oh, yes. after oh, yes. going through three oh, yes. years of incarceration. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, you yes. Know? And thanks be to God, he placed somebody in your life that didn't judge you. Mm -hmm that was willing to say, hey, why don't you at least come to church? Yeah, exactly. And see, there again, all we're looking for is a chance. Right. 
And there are so many people that don't understand that God places people in high positions to give a chance. Exactly. So exactly. those who are out there that's able to give a convicted felon a chance, uh, I think they don't really understand the position that God has placed, it, placed them in. You're absolutely right. Uh, and the it, employers right. that can uh, allow a convicted felon to make $18 an hour, if you mark on the application the honest answer. Right. Uh, uh, they don't realize the opportunity and the greatness that God has placed in them. Uh, so therefore, they look for people who are good. And none of us are really good. Right. We've all did things uh, that will get us landed in prison. Right. Uh, but the difference I always say between uh, uh, those people and us, we got caught, we got caught. and they didn't. Right, exactly. So, and, so therefore, people, uh, we just need a chance. People need a chance. You're right. And, I, and, I, and, and the thing that, that uh, I like what you're, what you're saying, God sometimes put them in a position yeah. to help us. That's what he does. That's what he does. And, and we said something even before, before we started. When you say felon, People, instead of asking you what you went to prison for, they mark they, you. Th they, they mark you because mm -hmm. felonies, um, there's a whole category yeah. of things and yeah. crimes that they yeah. can put you in. Just like the word dairy. You look at the word dairy. Mm -hmm. So many things come in the word dairy. Milk, right. cheese, cottage cheese. Uh, all, the, yeah. all these yeah. dairy products. Yeah. Yeah. So when you, when you put felony on your application, they a lot of things run through their minds, uh -huh. yeah. and they they the think worst the worst, yeah. mm -hmm. and so they won't tell you that that's what why they're not hiring mm -hmm. you. But we know in our heart yeah. that, exactly. that that they're not hiring us because of this. And sometimes even in my applications before uh, before I actually got a job, it's like I would just tell them. And I knew that because I went to prison for armed robbery. Nobody wants that kind of person around <laughs> them because he might take stuff. You know what I'm saying? So, so, but, but I, I, I would put it on there because it's like I, I, I would give you the opportunity to know. Right. And I tell you, you get a lot of doors slammed in your yes, face, sir. and it's difficult. Yes, it's, it's difficult. very, it's very, very hard because because you said it earlier before before we start filming. Um, sometimes because you get so you get rejected so much, you get so frustrated that you start backing up. Yeah, you go back to that which worked before. And, and, and when you get so frustrated with that, you, you gotta eat. Mm -hmm. if, if you have a family, you have to feed yeah, your family. Exactly, exactly. And, and you don't, you don't, money just don't come to you. Exactly. You know, you have to make it. Exactly. And, and you go, this survival thing kicks in. Mm -hmm. and this is what people don't understand sometimes. It's like, if you slam the door in my face, I, I still gotta survive. Yeah. Exactly. I, I'm out here now, and, and it, it's frustrating because I've done my time. Mm -hmm. I went through your system. Mm -hmm. Your system gave me the amount of time that I'm supposed to, that, that I have. Mm -hmm. Your system, your system let me out. Mm -hmm. Now I'm out. I gotta survive. So I gotta come to you. Yeah, exactly. For some help. Yeah. And if you don't help me, yeah. then what I am have I to do, do something. I, I gotta yeah. do something, yeah. and I go, I start going backwards. And then eventually, you know, it becomes a circle. Mm -hmm. I eventually get caught because you can't even, you can't never keep you can't keep doing wrong, and think that you're gonna get by. Exactly. You eventually get caught. Exactly. And then and here you are. So, if if we don't say anything to the public, mm. to to people, the thing that that we have to say is, give us a chance. Mm. Give us a chance. God puts you right. And I like how you put that. It's not by coincidence that an ex offender comes to your place of business. Yeah. Yeah. God puts you in a place to give a person exactly. a exactly. chance. Exactly. If, if you don't know what they, what they were incarcerated for, ask them. Exactly. Because, you know, and, and agree with me on, the, on this. How hard is it for you to mark yes? Oh, man, it's, it's, it would probably still be difficult right now. It, it, it would still be difficult right now. That's one of the hardest things because, like I say, and like I've said um, so many times during this program, all you're looking for is a chance. Right. And if you've been rejected so, so many, many times, times, I mean, you've got to try something. You got to. And, and if, if, if lying, you feel as if lying will get me to where I need to be, let it be so. I, I've, just, I've, just, I've just got to get. Got to get somewhere. Somewhere. Okay. How long have you, have you been out now? Uh, 12 years. 12, 12 years. years. 12 years. Praise 12 years. God. Yes, he's good. Yeah. 12 yeah. years. Yeah. That is amazing. Yeah. 12 years. Mm -hmm. and, and even now today, you're saying if you had to fill out a job, job application, it would be hard for you. Even you would do it because you're a man of God. But 
it would still be difficult. It, 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 would still, it would still be difficult because it's something that haunts you and you know, you know in your heart that, that why this is here. I mean, right. I mean, you know, yes, it should matter, but um, uh, get to know the person. Exactly. Get to know the person first. And, and one of the things I think I shared with you before the program is um, uh, that many people don't realize that the people that uh, come from being incarcerated are some of the greatest people you ever want to meet. Exactly. Some of the greatest people you'll ever want to meet. Exactly. And, and those people are just, man, they're, they're willing to do anything. And you have an employer for life. Exactly. And, and you know, you said something very that, 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 that touched me before we started. It's like uh, sometimes people have a, a strong passion mm -hmm. just to do the right thing. Yeah. Once they've done their time, some of them have a strong passion to get out, get their life back, and do the right thing. Mm. I mean, and, and then when they get rejected and get doors slammed in the face, it's like, what's the use? Yeah. Yeah. What's the use? Exactly. And, and, and I'm just, I'm so proud of you. Oh, 12 God bless years. You. God bless you. And, and I know it, it's, it's been God. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and sometimes I know even me, it's tw 21 years for me, but I still remember mm -hmm. those years of incarceration. That's I still it. remember the, yeah. the difficulties that I had trying to prove myself. Mm -hmm. To not only my family, but to the, to, to the to society. Yeah. And even even today, when I mention I was incarcerated for armed robbery, people still kind of mm -hmm. have this strange yeah, look will. on their yeah, face. They will. Yeah. But you know what? I'm so grateful that uh, God has blessed yeah. me, has changed yeah. my life, yeah. and it's evident that he's changed yeah. yours, and, and you're pastoring now, mm -hmm. uh, and, and God, I'm just so grateful God at what God has, has, has done for you. Thank you. And uh, b before we leave, I want to wanna just mention to the people um, that, that are listening because we have one minute left and I'm going to do this right this time. Don't forget about our life, um, our ex-offenders support group. We meet every first Monday uh, at the W.C. Young Community Center. There is an, um, the public is invited, ex-offenders. We come and try to help find jobs, try to give them places to stay, try to really help them. And we also have a Life Savers class every Tuesday at 1130. Is, is we meet at Christ Temple Church. And again, Pastor Pryor, thank you thank so you, much. Man. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you. Thank and you. thank you uh, again uh, for thank you again for being with us on this program. And God bless you. Join us again for life after lockup. God bless you so much, and you have a marvelous day. <laughs>